Hola. Hola, comadres. Bienvenidas. What a pleasure to be here with you today for Comadres Kitchen. For a person who doesn't cook, but who loves to eat, boy, this is a pleasure to just watch somebody else fix a wonderful meal for us. <laughs> so, you know, we started the Cooking with Las Comadres, uh, Comadres Kitchen, I guess last year. And we were fortunate enough that Comadre Lola uh, with Comadre Lola's Kitchen uh, introduced us to some Mexican uh, meals that and drinks that were and uh, types of, uh, of uh, gifts that you can make with food. That was a whole lot of fun. And so we welcome your suggestions for other types of um, cooking experiences that you would like to see us explore uh, in these shows. Uh, really, it's uh, I'm going to give you a few instructions about this uh, uh, gathering today, and then I'll introduce a little bit Comadre Lola, and then she will take it and make the introduction for the rest of the show. Both Comadre Maria and I welcome you, and we're so happy that you're here with us. want to remind you that this um, program is being taped, so keep yourself on mute, and also remember that people who have the entire screen filled with images of us will be able to see what you're doing, even if you can't see them on the screen. Just a little reminder about that. The other thing is we'd like for you to put questions that you have in the chat, and then Lola will be reading them and uh, answering them. She may ask you to ask the question yourself, but we'll see as we move on in the program. And then we'd also like to ask you to enter in the chat, each of you who is here, please, where you're from, and if you're cooking with us, or if you're just watching the show. Either way, we'd like to have that information in the chat, if you don't mind. And just very briefly, Comadre Lola and I have known each other for a very long time. She's not nearly as old as I am, but she came as quickly as she could. She was a mere child when I met her. She started out in Washington, D.C. with Las Comadres, and then she went to Southern California, in a couple of places there, and now she's moved to Denver, and she's with us there. And of course, Comadre Mirta, we have known each other ever since the Comadre started in New York City, and it has been a pleasure to know you. So Thank I'm going to turn the, you, oh, we're thrilled to have you here today. And so I'm going to turn the program over to Comadre Lola. Thank you, Nora. Hola, Comadres. I am just going to briefly introduce myself so that we can get uh, started cooking. My name is Lola Wiarco Dweck, and I'm originally from Southern California. I currently live in um, Highlands Ranch, which is about 20 minutes outside of Denver, Colorado. And I'm the writer and creator behind Lola's Cocina, which is where I, which is where I share my family uh, recipes that I love and want to share with family and friends from all over the world. And I was reading uh, Chef Mirta's bio, and I feel that we have so much in common, even though we specialize in different cuisines. All of my food focuses, uh, my website focuses mostly on Mexican food, and Chef Mirta focuses on food from Argentina, which I'm so excited to learn more about. Um, so she's going to be cooking, uh, we're going to, she's going to be demoing a recipe for us tonight. But before we get started, I just want to remind everyone, like uh, um, Comadre said, to stay on mute. If you have a question, and you're able to unmute yourself, feel free to um, interrupt and ask questions. That will That's what makes the classes a lot more fun and interactive for everyone. And if you're shy or if for some reason you're not able to unmute yourself, please drop the questions in the chat and I will be checking the chat and asking them um, along, uh, along the way. So let's see, let me just introduce, briefly introduce Chef Mirta and then she's gonna tell us what we're gonna be cooking today. A little bit more about what we're gonna be cooking today, okay. Chef Mirta Rinaldi is a New York comadre who brings amazing Argentinian food to the city via her company Mendulcina. The Mendoza native is a chef and caterer and, and has been highlighted several times as one of New York's best food makers. Mirta is also a chef at the League of Kitchens and tonight she'll be cooking her famous portobello mushrooms stuffed with provolone cheese and topped with a delicious chimichurri sauce. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Comadre. We're so excited to get cooking with you tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Lola. So 
Um, okay, so I'm Mirta Rinaldi. I was born in Mendoza, Argentina, and I've been passionate about food all my life. I have, uh, I was privileged to have a, a very good group of cooks in my family. So from each one of them, I learned something, especially from my mom. And um, so I've been always cooking with anything I had. We always created something. Can you tell us about how old you were when you got started cooking and then what inspired you to, to start Mendulcina? Well, I started Mendulcina when I was laid off and um, uh, and uh, I decided if I don't do my passion right now, I will never make it happen. So around 50, I decided to open my company and it was a difficult time to start, uh, but it, it, with time and more experience, I work in different kitchens. I work at the US Open for five years. I work in, in huge uh, party salons. And I, I said, okay, they pay me little money, but for me, it's, uh, it's just, school and I will be learning different techniques and uh, ways of, of uh, do platters. And uh, so uh, with what I knew that enhanced my, my knowledge about cooking. And uh, I have my company, Mendulcina, and the name was created because I'm from Mendoza. So we fuse I, I was making dulces. So it was La Mendocina who made dulces, and that's how Mendocina was born. Um, I have few products uh, besides um, working uh, and catering as well, but I have a few signature um, dishes. Um, I made alfajores de maicena. That is my most popular uh, cookie and very popular in Argentina. And uh, every party- I have party... a question. Are alfajores typically made with maicena or is there a different- Yes, types? they are alfajores de maicena. It's For anyone who doesn't know, can you, yeah, can you describe what an alfajor is? cookies stuffed with dulce de leche and surrounded by, by coconut. And my, my alfajores have been featured in, uh, in the Oprah magazine, in the Food and Wine magazine, as well as my chimichurri in the Food and Wine magazine, together with some costillas, some short ribs. And, and I had very good press. Um, and do you, do you ship your alfajores or do you, where are you? Yes, based? I, in, in, in New York City? I ship all over the country. Okay, good to know. Okay. Yes. They're delicious. Alfajores are delicious and they make great gifts if any of you comadres have to give gifts to your friends. Okay. Yes. I have another question just about when you got started. You were in your 50s when you got started with your business. Were there any challenges or do you think that was to your advantage to start um, to start in your 50s, your business when you were in your 50s? Yeah, many challenges. Uh, lack of money. And started very, very little uh, with with very little money and um, with a lot of uh, with big expectations. <laughs> uh, so it was uh, gradually increasing. And um, I also made Dulce de Membrillo, uh, Queen's Paste. And that's how I started really making the um, Queen's Paste. And it's a perfect compliment for cheeses. Oh my Manchester. gosh, I love that. I love the picture of you surrounded by all the membrillos. Oh my, it's not an yes. that many people are familiar with. Um, and it's not, it's very time consuming. It's membrillo, ate de membrillo, mermelada de membrillo. It's something that dates back to the monjas. So I, I, when I saw that on your website, I just, oh, I loved it. I love the picture and I love that you make it. 
Yeah, Membrillo is uh, it's from the Mediterranean. That's where it was born. And uh, it went through Turkey, Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, Spain, and then down to South America. It's one of the oldest fruit on earth. There are many stories about winds. They said it was the oldest fruit on earth. Uh, some people challenged that and said, no, pomegranate was the oldest fruit on earth. And um, so I called my mom once uh, and she came here to help me with the production of queens. And I also um, deliver that all over the country. I have a question. Do you have to, do you source your, uh, where do you source your quince from because here they're very very expensive per unit so it's really expensive just to even make a small jar of jam and I, yeah. I also have one question from comadre nora is the cajeta from argentina the same as mexican cajeta or dulce de leche is different it's from similar cajeta. it's okay. similar it's it's uh, it's like caramel here it's yes. very similar yes the one difference uh, is but... cajeta from mexico is actually made with goat milk so it does have a different flavor Right. And, uh, you know, you make dulce de leche uh, with milk and sugar, basically. And but many, many hours of stirring until it become uh, dark, as as we used to see it here. But you can make your own if you don't have access to dulce de leche from an, any Argentinian store. You can always make it with condensed milk. But it has a, a a very particular way of cooking it. So you, you make yours from scratch, or do you make it with condensed milk? Your I, like no, no, I don't make it with condensed milk. I buy it in bulk. Oh, good. I okay. buy um, containers of fifty kilos. So I, <laughs> I have, uh, I buy it. Yeah, directly from the source. Yeah. And your membrillos? Do you know where they sh ship from? I I buy membrillo in the um, in, um hold on Hans Point Market, which is the biggest uh, uh, market in the city where all the restaurants shop, and um, so I have my provider there. But if you go to any store in season, they cost five dollars or four dollars a piece. Per, yes, perfect. Yeah, food. and so the source is half of the year from Chile. The other half is from California. Those mm -hmm. are the only two places where they get the queens here in New York. Yes, yeah. I wish I lived in California still so that I can grow, have my own tree. <laughs> yeah, and there in, in upstate, I've seen trees of Mendocino, of uh, Mendocino, of Membrillo, yeah. Oh. Okay. In in Argentina, they use membrilleros to in the borders of of the land because they resist storms. So to protect their fruit trees, they put membrillos on both, uh, uh, and, you know, the exterior exterior of uh, of every land. Okay, fascinating. So I I'm going to ask one more question so that you can get started. Uh, we heard that you're studying to be a yerba mate sommelier. Um, can you describe what yerba mate is for anyone who doesn't know? And then how does one become a sommelier? Okay, so um, I'm starting to become a sommelier. I'm still studying. Uh, I will finish in November. Uh, yerba mate, I'm going to show you. Yerba mate is an infusion and it's a tea. And I have here yerba mate with, with uh, sticks, yerba mate that is clean, yerba mate with chamomile. You can mix it with herbs and you can add sugar if you like it. Um, yerba mate is an, inf an infusion that has many good qualities. It's antioxidant. Um, it has a lot of uh, good qualities. It has ma uh, magnesium, selenium, calcium, and it's also a stimulant. In excess, uh, you get uh, high in yerba mate, but it's very different than coffee. If you have coffee in excess, at one point you drop 
and and with yerba mate, your mind is clear, and you can study, you can work, and is um, it has also medicinal uh, properties. So how and do you? Like to we drink, drink we drink mate, and the first mate that was created was created in a gourd like this, and we use a metal straw. So you add yerba mate, add hot water, and you zip through the to the metal metal straw. And uh, but um, the mate from our culture, it's um, it's a it's um, a symbol of friendship and uh, togetherness and. Uh, Nobody, there's no war over mate, and it has no uh, difference. The poor and the rich drink mate. Actually, I was at my doctor's office in January, and the doctor had a thermos and his mate there next to the <laughs> and his the students walk to the university with the mate and the thermos. So it's so popular, and so I also. Is it more of a yerba mate culture or do they still drink a lot of coffee in Argentina? Or you know how like in they London? They drink a lot of coffee also. Okay. But um yerba mate is so popular. I was um in in January and February, I spent two months there, and I went to a soccer game. And I would say half of the the, the uh, stadium was drinking mate. Children drink mate, their parents, everyone, everyone has their famous mate, and and I that's why I decided to study to become a sommelier, and uh, and make it more of uh, you know I want people to know the quality of of this because it's really um, a beautiful thing to to host and to. To make friends, yeah, and invite yeah. you to for conversations, and um, so. It's a, how long? How long is the process to become a sommelier? It's about six months. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, I started from a school in Argentina. Oh my gosh! That and I'm learning so, so much about it that I can't wait to go to the north of Argentina to Misiones, where they there are three countries in the world. That happened that uh, produced the yerba mate, and it's Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina. Brazil has the biggest um, area of plantations, but the the biggest export is in Argentina, and ten percent of the uh, exports goes to Syria. Yeah, Syria, Afghanistan, and. Uh, so India and more and more. And after the World Cup, where the, the players came out with their mate in their hands, uh, it became more popular. Yes. Okay, so I think we can get started cooking. If you want to give us a rundown of what we're going to be making. I know you said sure. portobello, stuffed portobello mushrooms, and then if you can show yes. us some the beautiful ingredients you have for us. I have big, big portobellos here. Humongous. <laughs> you take the, the center and don't remove the gill. Um, so today is very simple, the recipe, because I'm going to stuff it with provolone cheese. And um, if you're hosting, and, what would you say you would you would have one provolone mushroom? I mean, one um, portobello mushroom per person? Yes, exactly. And if you have these with cheese, and a little bit of chimichurri, it's like having a good steak. Yes, I've with had a salad, it's delicious. It's like perfect. It. Yes. Or you can make a sandwich. But most people drink um eat it like like this with the stuff. You if you take the the gill and with that you make a paste. You can stuff it with anything, anything that you have leftovers, uh, rice. And vegetables. You can stuff it with that and put it in the oven. I'm gonna I'm gonna use la chapa. It's something that I brought from Argentina, and it's cast iron, but 
I'm uh, addicted to this chapa. I even put the, the leftover rice here. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to use the la chapa to cook the portobelos. Quick question. I, I feel that there's always an ongoing debate on whether you wash a any type of mushroom or just dust it off. How do you... Yes. You no, it? you don't wash it with water. What you do, you use a paper towel and with a paper towel, you clean it. You clean it, you clean the sides and uh, and that's it. You don't have to wash it because it gets too watery. And yes. then you just kind of shake the inside, the, the middle part, or you just... Just no, to... I don't touch it. Okay. It's clean. Yes. So I am I have two bathrooms here. And as I was taking them out of the fridge, I dropped this one. So it's this a little broken here, but it's uh, still good. I'm going to clean it because I haven't cleaned it. Uh, I wanted to show you how to clean the mushroom. The mushroom. And um, so it's very simple. Do you teach cooking classes out of your home? Yes, sometimes I teach online for the League of Kitchens. It's an international school where we are uh, 14 instructors from all over the world. And we teach food and culture. And we have classes from our homes. So if you take a, a class with the League of Kitchens, you come to my place. And I show you elements that I have for the gauchos, uh, cooking, uh, books and many things and I have a collection of of mates of 120 mates so all kinds of mates and I love to share that and we we play music and I teach you everything about our culture oh so fun and, uh, and the instructors that we have in the school are from Uzbekistan Afghanistan India Bangladesh Japan Mexico, um, Iran, Iraq, Indonesia, Burkina Faso, um, Greece, uh, Russia, and we all cook each other's food. So I'm learning all those cultures and cooking all their, their favorite meals as well. So it's a pleasure to be, we are only women by chance, uh, but we are not competing with each other, but yes, sharing. It's a beautiful community. Yes. So I'm happy to to also work for, for the League of Kitchens. Oh, it sounds so fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have our portobello mushrooms, and then what are we, st we're stuffing them with the provolone cheese and anything else? Yes. Um. Okay. What I'm going to do, just give me one second. I'm going to get the herbs. Just a question for the comadres. Have any of you cooked with portobello mushrooms before? You can just say yes or no in the chat if you can. Yes. I have some thyme that I, I'm going to use fresh. I use only fresh herbs and also rosemary. So I'm gonna cut these and make a, a, um, a little mix with oil. And um, I'm going to take part of the uh, rosemary. And if Can you, you see well, Yes, if you don't have fresh tomillo or rosemary, which is it okay? Well, you can dry? use dry. Yes. Yeah. And one thing that I will recommend if you're going to make the chimichurri is try to use fresh parsley. It's a different flavor if you use fresh parsley. Can you describe and, and, what, Can you describe chimichurri for? I mean, maybe yes. some of us have tasted it, but how would you okay. describe it? The Argentinian chimichurri. Is made with only parsley. You can be created, uh, creative and use cilantro, mint, um, arugula, anything. You, you can be very artistic about it. But Argentinian chimichurri uses parsley. And the original recipe 
uses red wine vinegar. My chimichurri, I use um, balsamic. That is the only difference with with uh, my chimichurri. And is that and then, like you pres you prefer the flavor or the texture, the thickness of the balsamic? Say it again. I'm sorry. Is it, be is it because you prefer the flavor or the texture of the balsamic over the? Yes, it's a little sweeter, and uh, I like that flavor a lot. And and uh, food and wine loved it, and that's why they they publish my chimichurri in, in their magazines. Oh gosh, we have so, to find that recipe and share it too. Yes, and uh, it's very simple to make it. And uh, I'm gonna prepare that. But first, before I forget, I'm going to um, turn the heat on this chapa in medium. The chapa is the grill that you're- Chapa is the grill that I'm gonna use. And uh, and it's uh, I'll show you. I'm gonna get a close up of the chapa, but I have to take the phone out of here so you can see the chapa. It's a big grill. Hmm. And uh, so I'm gonna wait for this to, to warm up and then I'll prepare the chimichurri before I continue with, hold on a second, let me move this. And uh, so I'm going to cut this uh, thyme. Is anybody cooking? Um, I don't think the comadres are cooking, but some no? of them. No, okay. That, because that they've made your recipe before. I can expedite this, and if nobody's cooking, then I can take my time. Hold on one second. I'm going to put these herbs and chocolate. You're cooking on a gas stove, correct? Not an electric stove? You're cooking on a gas stove? Yes. Gas stove. So I'm going to chop this as fine as I can. Put it in a container, need a bowl with some olive oil mix it yeah I'm gonna mix this with olive oil and then put it on the mushroom all over I spread this with a little bit of, of uh, oil to give it a, a nice earthy flavor. So that is just the herbs, the rosemary, the and thyme, thyme, and olive oil. Mm -hmm. Only that, and olive, olive oil. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of this oil in, in, in the center and these, these uh, mushrooms are going to go, I'm going to cook the, uh, the mushrooms top side up and I will add a little bit of, of oil in la chapa just a touch of oil and add the mushrooms there 
and let it cook for about 10 minutes. And you'll see they become flat. They flattened quite a lot. So if you do it in the oven, you can cook it in 395, 400, and uh, maybe 10 minutes until they become flat. Then you turn them, and it's when you just, uh, when you turn them, well, you'll see. What I'm going to make now is a chimichurri. Okay. So let me wash my hands. Question, would you ever do the mushrooms on the, cook them on the grill or would that dry them out too much? Say it again. I, I... Oh, would you ever cook your mushrooms on a grill, like an outdoor grill, or would that dry them out too much? Oh, yes. Unfortunately, I don't have that and I can't even use my terrace. That is one of my biggest uh, regrets, not having, uh, not being able to cook and to barbecue in the terrace. <laughs> But you know, in Argentina, we we grill and uh, and on the grill outdoors, we cook everything. Yes, okay, we even well, make pizzas. While you're preparing, yeah. I found your your chimichurri recipe, so I'm just going to read what it says on the food and wine. Fantastic. It okay, so what I do? Go ahead. With the chimichurri. I prefer to use a glass jar because you can keep this chimichurri in the fridge for about 20 days. And if you put it in the freezer in portions, little portions, uh, you can keep it up to six months. So uh, I'm gonna use the glass jar and I'm gonna start with the four cloves of garlic, yes? And I'm gonna grate it like this. While you're grating, I'm gonna read the description of your chimichurri in the food and wine. It says traditional recipes for the art for the for Argentina's most popular condiment for grilled meat called for red wine vinegar. But League of Kitchens cooking instructor Mirta Rinaldi and her family prefer the sweet flavor of balsamic. Rinaldi always keeps a jar of this balsamic chimichurri in the refrigerator as it ages the vibrant color mallows, but the sharpness remains. It's the perfect partner for, for Rinaldi's tira de asado, which is Argentinian, Argentinian style grilled beef short ribs or grilled chicken, steak or pork. Oh, that's great. I was just going to ask you what, what you would serve your chimichurri with, or if you were to serve your portobello mushrooms, what would you serve them with? Well, meats, and uh, I I use this chapa, and I cook also um, vegetables, any vegetable. Um, one that is very good with this, it's, um, um, hold on. I can't remember right now the name I'm having in the moment right now. And, uh, okay, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay, I have a quick question. I saw that you were grating your garlic with a grater. Is there a reason you like the grater instead of the garlic press? Right, I don't, I don't use the garlic press anymore. Okay. Or I use the mini blender. A mini, a mini um, uh, food processor. You know, yeah, food processor. Or I do this; it's faster and better. Okay. So I'm gonna use. It's an on on the uh, spicy side, okay? And I'm gonna use one tablespoon of red pepper flakes. One tablespoon of oregano. This oregano is from Mendoza. Men Mendoza is selling uh, oregano all over the country. We have one of the best oreganos in, in the country. And then one teaspoon of paprika, not smoke, regular paprika. One teaspoon of 
black pepper or white pepper, if you have, and one teaspoon of salt. And now I'm gonna use parsley, only the leaves, only the leaves. So um, if you take the, um, the leaves, don't throw the stems. The stems can be used in a soup, in a guiso, anywhere, but it's a shame to throw it because it gives you a lot of flavor. So uh, as my mom taught me, she never threw any of this. She used it in soups or anything that she, she was cooking. So you, um, I would say the amount of um, parsley that you use is a full hand or a, a full cup of uh, of um, parsley but a full hand of parsley i'll show you it's what i use for this chimichurri okay we have a question are the mushrooms on a grill or a skillet so your chapa would you say it's kind of like a flat flat grill right yes it's a flat grill okay cast or iron chapa. Okay. yes it's like a thick flat cast iron um, we have um, a very famous Argentinian chef called Francis Malman. He's in the red and the red table, and um, he uses la chapa a lot in his uh, cuisine as well. So only the leaves. Did you bring your I chapa back from Argentina, or did you find it here? Yes, I brought it in my luggage. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I bring everything that I use in my classes and everywhere I bring it in my luggage. So thank God they don't open my luggage. I'm lucky. So as you see, it's a full hand of parsley that I'm using. Yeah. And I'm going to chop this. I can put it in the, in the, food processor too. If you were making this in a larger amount, would you put it in the food processor or do you still prefer chopping? Yes, I, I use the, I had two food processors, one small and one, one large. So usually I use it in the small one. It's faster. And it comes the you don't mind the te the texture is it's okay when you do the food process with the food processor. No, I don't mind it. It chopped very well, so evenly. But um, I wasn't sure if somebody was cooking with me, so I said, okay, I have to take the time to go along with anybody that is cooking. Anyway, this chimichurri, it's very good and very uh, popular. If I have friends for Christmas, they usually said, oh, just, just make me a chimichurri jar. That's all I want. Okay. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what tip. I do. And you said you can use different herbs like arugula or mint. And right. You can be very creative. You can use cilantro. And mint yeah i've the made some versions of chimichurri i've made some i'm making with... the argentinian chimichurri except that i use the the uh, balsamic yeah i always thought mint would overpower anything because it's such a strong flavor but when it when you make it kind of like you're making it it tames the the flavor so it still comes out really good as a sauce mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. so i'm going to add these in the jar, you know, you can uh, use the the ice, um, the containers that you use for to make ice in the fridge, in the, um, the ice freezer. Cube. Mm -hmm. And if you put a um, plastic wrap and make the, the little uh, cubes, 
-hmm. with chimichurri, so you can separate them once they 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 are frozen. Then you separate the little pieces and keep them in the free in the in the freezer for six months. Yeah, I've so even seen the ice I'm cube to... where they have it has the lid on it, so you can cover it. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me get. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of of uh, balsamic vinegar. Can you see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So two tablespoons of balsamic and one full cup of olive oil. So when you keep this in the refrigerator and you take a spoon of this to marinate anything that you want, make sure that you add olive oil on top so it doesn't oxidize. It, it should always be covered with oil. So if so you were you making it in the ice cubes, you would do an extra little dash of olive oil on top? Right. If you take a spoon of this and you see that it's the 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 paste it's exposed, you add olive oil. That's how you keep it. Okay. Yeah. I have a question for the comadres who are here. Would you prefer to try chimichurri with arugula, mint, or parsley? You can just answer in the chat. Parsley. I yeah, like it's parsley. The original, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like parsley. If I don't have anything else, I create my own with yeah. whatever I have. But otherwise, I prefer the the parsley. Yeah. And parsley has a lot of great benefit, health benefits too. The parsley, the garlic, it sounds like it's good for us. Yes, it's so good. Let me... Let you use spoon. you you use flat leaf parsley and can you use curly yes. parsley? Yes, Italian, uh -huh. Italian, Italian or, or flat leaf. Yes. Okay. Do you have a so, preference when it comes to olive oil or balsamic vinegar brands? Do you I have can a, hear well. That's why. Do you have a preference when it comes to olive oil or balsamic vinegar brands? Any any that you have, it's good. If if you shopping and it, it, it's it's cheaper than another brand, you just use whatever you have. Yeah, no brand, no no preference about that. So the chimichurri is ready, and it's thick, and uh, has a beautiful color. So I want to show you that it's not quite covered with olive oil. So I'm gonna add a little more olive oil so I can keep it in my fridge for longer time. And then when I use it, I just uh, use most of the um, paste, not so much oil, but the paste. Yeah. Does the so, chimichurri taste better as it gets older or as the flavor? Yes. Go? Okay. Yes. So as I said, today is good, but tomorrow is better. And how long did you say you can keep it in the refrigerator? About 20 days for sure. Yes. And in the fridge, in the in the um freezer, about six months. Yeah. And as you see. I'm going to take the, the phone again. OK. Can you see that they are flat, flat right now or no? I can't hear you. We can. Huh. Yes, I can't hear you. I don't oh, know we... if the volume. No, we can see that they got flatter. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can see it. Great. So I'm going to give it another two minutes to this one. This is almost ready, but I want uh, a little more cooked. 
Do you ever and... add, do you ever add onion to your chimichurri or that's not a traditional? No, ingredient? no, you don't use um, onion. Okay. If you add onion to this preparation, um, it could be a different sauce, salsa criolla, we call it. Okay. With a little bit of uh, onions, chopped very fine. The, um, the provolone, uh, I put a, a good uh, thick slice, about half an inch of, uh, of provolone. So I think I'm going to turn this. So that part is cooked. And in the oven, it's the same thing. If you see it that is flat, it's ready to be turned. Okay. And what I'll do now is I'm going to add, hold on. I'm going to add a little spoon of chimichurri in the mushroom. And I also going to put add some chimichurri in the provolone. And put it, keep it on top of this. I like that you used the thick slices. I was imagining shredded cheese, but I like the way it looks with the big No, the, this is better. And you see why. Let me wash my hands. It's a good um, a tapa, I would say. Like the, in Spain, they do tapas with a little a little piece of bread. And uh, if you add this uh, in, and you cut it in, in small pieces, it's a great tapa as an entry, uh, an appetizer, I would say. So I'm gonna cover this with aluminum foil. And is that just so that it kind of steams together? Right, so and and it it will help the cheese to melt faster. And a little uh, medium heat. I'm lowering the heat a little bit, and I'm going to give it about five minutes to to melt that cheese. And I prefer here. Um, some contain some uh, beautiful container that my friends in Argentina made for me to use in my chimichurris. So I'm gonna have that, and when the chim the mushroom is is ready, I will serve my my little plate, and I know what I'm having for dinner. Hey, can you tell us about, you said that you were recently in Argentina. When you travel to Argentina, what are maybe two or three dishes that you have to taste when you're there because you miss it and you love them? Well, asado, barbecue, you know, asado. And they're becoming very creative with the asados. Um, I had my, my nephew make me, um, they use something... Um, they use different elements besides la chapa. Uh, this chapa has room for legs. So I can use it outdoors if I'm using, if I'm making a, a big a barbecue outdoors, I can use it with charcoal. And, uh, but here it's flat. I don't have legs for this, but I don't need them. But uh, I tried um, matambre. Matambre, it's, ah, uh, I can look, I can't remember the name of the matambre, caramba. So it's a flat piece of meat and uh, they they 
grill it. And uh, when it's almost ready, they add tomato sauce and um, and cheese. It's like a pizza. Um, and I have also morcilla and vegetables, but the morcilla and the vegetables are cooked in red wine. Mendoza, it's uh, produced 85% of the Malbec in the country. So it's, um, I go in the summer uh, because I like the vendimia, the harvest time. And when it's harvest time, which is the end of February, beginning of March, and the city dressed up for to celebrate the harvest. And uh, even the fountains are tinted red. So from every fountain, you see Malbec flowing and, and just, you know, it's just uh, this one um, uh, part of the tourism that is called Los Caminos del Vino, uh, the path of the wine, where you visit different bodegas, different wineries. You can visit a traditional winery, you can use a modern one and uh, an artisanal. And they're in the between the vineyards. And the ecotourism is so blooming right now that you even have in all railroad tracks, they they make these big mm, uh, transportation. It's like a bus cut in half. And it goes through the the tracks, and you just it's like you are in a bicycle. So you pedal through the vineyard, and in the center of these places, there's a guy giving you taste of cheeses and cold cuts, and you're drinking wine. It's a celebration of wine. It's amazing what's happening there. Uh, the wineries is over a thousand wineries, not. All are to visit, but um, you can see the production of wine, how they process everything at that time in February and March. And the final celebration is La Fiesta de la Vendimia. And uh, it's a celebration in an amphitheater that we have in Mendoza that seats 8, 18,000 people. And uh, every section is called Malbec, a Chardonnay, a Sauvignon, and uh, on stage, there are different levels. And at one point, you might see 800 or 900 people dancing tango. It's amazing. That that celebration is unbelievable. And they, they um, elect Una Reina de la Vendimia from mm -hmm. different parts of the, of the state. They represent... Uh, and the funny thing is that, oh my God, look at this. Oh, wow. Now I'm going to get the phone and show you what we have here. So that's what we have. Okay, nice and melted and a little browned, uh-huh. Yeah, so it's ready. I have a question from the audience. If you're using a regular sartén, would you put the lid on it or does that make it too steamy? Because you use no, you can you can use the uh, uh, I prefer aluminum, but if you have a it, it, the only thing you have is a co it's a, a, you know a, a cover from any pad you can use it too. But you prefer aluminum because it doesn't get so steamy. It is a little more. Um, it has some air. Yes. Okay. There's yes. some flow. Yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. So I'm I have a lot of. We have a lot of comadres who want to go to on a trip to Argentina. Also to toast. And I'm going to use that piece of bread to to present the the portobello. Okay. Let me toast it a little bit. This is such a great dish for people who are for vegetarian options that are hearty or for good and appetizers. Piece of bread.
And this is what we have. This is the final milk. Let's see. I can. Can you see it well? Yes, that looks delicious. The cheese looks excellent. Mm -hmm. I hear very little of you. I cannot hear well. I don't know for some reason. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Can you so, see better? Guys, come over. We want to go there and then we want to go to Argentina next. I don't hear. <laughs> Hold on, okay. let me see if I I have to, for some reason, I don't have any volume here. I'm gonna Can take the me? phone here and where's the volume? Now, can you hear me? I can hear you, can you hear me? Oh yes, now I can hear you well. I okay, think we I have a press. We have a question. Can you use baby portamello mushrooms portobello mushrooms yes. and serve this as an appetizer? Absolutely. Okay. And, and you would still use thick a thick piece of portobello, not shredded? No. If you okay. use it as an appetizer and you use small uh, mushrooms, you can stuff them with anything. Not only porto, not, not only um, um, this cheese, cheese, but you can make um, a little paste with leftovers and then you shred the cheese on top. Okay. And what, do you do anything with the stems of the mushroom? Yes, that is, that can be used to stuff them. You know, okay. you chop it very, very fine and you use it as a stuffing also. And you can mix it with cheese right there and, and uh, shredded cheese and in rice or vegetables, anything, onions. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Well, everything looks so, delicious, and I can't wait to make it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the chimichurri because I have everything to make that, and then I'm gonna pick up my mushrooms tomorrow to make it for dinner. Perfect. Okay, let me know how it comes out. I will. I'll email you. Thank you. We'll, we'll send the recipe again just in case um some people don't have it. And we're right on time, two minutes before seven. So if if nobody has, has any questions, I think that's a wrap. Thank you so much, Mirta. We're looking You're forward welcome. to our next cooking session and to making your recipes. My pleasure to, to be with you guys and, and just uh, to cook for the comadres. Thank Buenos you, Mirta. Gracias. Yes. Thanks, Lola. Hola. Nice to see you. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, Nora and, and Maria. It was a pleasure. Uh, it was wonderful, as always. Thank yes. you. Oh, Thank good you, to Maria see Sarah. you. Yes, yes. <laughs> so yes. maybe yes. for the Worldwide Comadrazo, we can have cooking classes. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Some I kind of, you know, eat. little, a little, we put, we prepare the meat. <laughs> Great idea. Let's work on it. Let's work on it. Yes. yes. And in the meantime, check out the website. I need to order some of those alfajores as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're very popular, so you won't you won't be disappointed. Okay, thank you. Good night. Good night. Wonderful, Good night, everybody. Bye, Beautiful interview. Beautiful interviewee. Thank you.